Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name is Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities ETFs that I follow. I'm going to interject my financial opinions as we go. And if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com, where I dive deeper into these sectors, into individual companies, uh, and I share when I'm buying, what I'm buying, if I do sell, which is pretty rare. Uh, and uh, I share my portfolio with everybody. So if that seems interesting, uh, we have a discount coupon code MAYDAY, M-A-Y-D-A-Y, uh, going on right now. Let's dive in. Let's see what's going on uh, today. We've got the DXY that I normally start with. Again, guys, it's going to take some time for this to work its way down if it's going to sell off. Right now, this still looks okay for a move higher if. Um, if the buyers want to step in here, I should say buyers of the dollar or weakness in other currencies uh, manifests itself with a higher DXY. And we've broken the downtrend line here. And we, we've had a little bit of a pullback. Not much of a bounce yet, but we do have a reversal candlestick and a small little guy. It could go in either direction here uh, in the short term. And yields are generally what determines that direction. So looking at yields, we've got the two-year yield at support. We do have an increasing or rising wedge. Uh, lots of interesting patterns that are developing here. Most of the time, a rising wedge breaks to the downside. Although we do have strong support witnessed by that big wick that we bought back up. The bounce, not totally convincing on the bounce, but we could come up and solidate upward on, a, on an inverted flag pattern and break to the downside. That is a possibility. So we're going to have to watch it here and see if we break to the downside. And uh, if the DXY follows yields, which it generally does, we would have a weaker dollar. Weaker dollar is good for precious metals. Uh, and these weaker yields are going to push precious metals to the upside. So if we are going to get that type of move, we would start to see precious metals firm up here is what we would see. Ten-year yield also a little bit lower today. And that does have a little bit of momentum a little bit of juice behind it where we could head a little bit lower uh, for the 10 year. And then the 30 year is the same way. We've got a little bit of momentum starting to build to the downside or yields to pull back uh, even further. TYX TNX ratio, something I do monitor. We did, we did get a yield curve inversion slightly on the long end of the curve. And again, when an opportune time is when you enter Precious metals at a low point ride it on up when the yield curve uninverts with yields coming and coming back down. TLT bond prices up a little bit on the 20 year, just slightly, and that's where the lower yields are going to come from. Higher bond prices, lower yields. Yields are, are the interest rate. And this does look good to go higher. So short term, I would say bond prices up. Yields probably down is what I am seeing here. And then the 2 and 10, we did get inversion of the yield curve where the 10-year went down more and the 2-year went up a little bit. So that's your inversion. Gold does like the fact of whatever the yields and dollar are doing. Dollar lower, yields slight or dollar sideways, yields on the longer end slightly lower. We did break this pattern, which is a flag pattern to the upside. So we could see a move to the upside in gold. It looks pretty dang good. Silver ripping it, just ripping it, baby. 3.73% looking good, feeling good. We do have a squeeze up here of a falling wedge that we've broken to the upside. So this does look pretty good. We could get a small down candlestick tomorrow. I call it a bloody nose. Very possible, but it does look like we are going to work our way on up. Platinum also just moving sideways. We're up against resistance here. I'm curious to see if we can break this and free willy here. <laughs> free willy. Uh, break this downtrend line and rip. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. We're up against resistance. And then palladium having a pretty big day too. It's much like silver today, a uh, big day today, up three and a half percent. 
And we're right underneath this resistance line that we are basically uh, on top of right now. There's the resistance line that we're on top of. Next to unit gold ratio, we had some good movement in the gold and silver mining companies, which is good uh, against gold because gold had a pretty big update. And we are starting to break through this downtrend, the downtrend that I call need to break this line for happiness. Um, happiness is going to come to those who are patient and have purchased gold and silver mining stocks down here. So we're starting to see a slight outperformance, and hopefully we can break completely through this. And we get, it's, it's going to be party time for gold and silver mining companies when we break through that. We've got the CRB index uh, slightly higher today. I'm not stating that this is going to, we could easily roll over here. Uh, think of this as a flag pattern that's inverted. So let's let's just wait and see what the next few trading sessions have. And I have a feeling that we could, it's possible to get a further move lower. CRB to S&P 500 moving down just a teeny bit today. We have the S&P and NASDAQ outperforming the CRB index today. That's why it went down a little bit. We're still in this huge, monstrous flag pattern that we've got uh, developing on the ratio it is, CRB to S&P. GDX, right at resistance, guys. We are about to RIP it, rip it. Uh, we got to get above this, this resistance line, get out of the flag pattern, and start sailing to new waters here. Oh, man, it looks pretty good on the monthly here. You can see if we get a good, strong closing to this month, uh, we could have a very, very strong momentum move here. GDXJ, that's already broken out, up 2.8%, looking good, feeling good. And that's your fl flaggish pattern. We're up above it. Let's see if we can stay up there. Maybe we do a retest tomorrow uh, before ripping. But it looks really good. We've got SILJ up 3.5%. This guy is ripping it. And again, we've got this kind of flaggish pattern going on that we uh, gapped up to kind of break out of. But we could see it do a retest. Uh, and it could even come back into the pattern. We'll see what occurs, um, but but that's what I'm seeing in the charts. It's it's a bullish formation to work its way on up. Crude oil up about 0.6 percent. We do have a little bit of momentum built before this, and we really need to see what it does down here. It could build another flag pattern that breaks lower. So I, I don't think that will be the case, but we just have to wait and see what comes uh, over the next week or two. Uh, TTF gas, ripping it up 4%. Absolute rip. Looks pretty good. And uh, we'll see if that momentum can continue. And this does look kind of like a bottoming pattern. Natural gas in America up 2.5%. Um, we'll probably get a retest out of this thing before heading higher. Uh, but looks good. And this does look like a bottom, bottoming type pattern that we normally see. And we'll see if we get direct traction immediately or if we kind of work our way and, and move sideways here for a little bit. Our boy XOP, yeah, you know me, up 1.2%. Again, guys, this doesn't look super strong. We've got a big downside move. Small little green guys coming up, big downside move. We could still do another downside move or consolidation sideways out of this thing. There's still downside pressure on it. We are at the neckline, which is huge support. So we're, we're, we could get pinned on this um, support level. OIH, uh, another one that looks very similar to XOP, big move lower, the squeeze up, move lower, and we've got these small green candlesticks. I think we're going to consolidate sideways uh, some, some more, is my guess, to work off that downside momentum. Sprout uranium trust moving sideways. Looks really good, actually. I like seeing these small little red candlesticks. Uh, signaling that there's not a lot of selling pressure, not a reversal candlestick. So I think we're going higher here. Uh, this is just a little flag pattern um, to move on up. URA looking good. It's trying to break. Well, it is breaking through uh, its upper upper line here, uh, resistance line. We could see a big move here, guys. Uh, we could be breaking out of this consolidation resistance area. URNM is also moving on up 2.8%, looking pretty solid. Um, decent, decent closing, decent closing, not like the best ever, but it's a good closing. And then URNJ also breaking out of this little um, pennant formation we've got to the upside. Looks really good. Uh, we could see further increases to the upside for URNJ. 
Uh, we had mixed yields today, and, and we'll see if TAN can bust through here, but is this a retest that gets rejected, or are we going to punch on through? Um, I think yields will determine that. And if we see lower yields, we could punch on through, and that's what we'll look for. Copper, uh, moving on up, that looks still very, very strong here on this breakout for copper. It's going to start to hit a lot of this resistance uh, over here uh, that we, we could pause here and consolidate before breaking out. So a little bit of resistance right where we're at. COPX up 1.5%, looking very strong. Um, this looks like it wants to keep moving. Looks very, very strong here, guys. Um, so good, good move there. Uh, lithium up a little bit today, 0.7. It looks okay. It's trying to probably bottom out here. Uh, REMX also trying to bottom out. Are we going to get a rejection candlestick to go lower or are we going to punch through? Um, looks like there's a couple of decisions that need to be made on some of these ETFs that we're watching. Uh, S&P 500 surprisingly moving on up. Could be the plunge protection team. Got to buy some S&P. But um, it's a strong candlestick today. Very strong. NASDAQ also has a strong candlestick. Big move up today. And um, it's basically moving on up now. Let's see what comes through here, what kind of candlesticks are we gonna get over the next week or two? Could be kind of a double top and we'll see if that occurs. KRE um, up 0.8% above that resistance zone. Uh, it looks okay, it looks like it's consolidating and waiting for lower yields, that's my guess. Emerging markets is also waiting for weaker dollar, lower yields. This has broken out of a short-term uh, consolidation area here. Here's the consolidation bottoming pattern, and we've broken out. This looks very, very good and constructive. Yes, we could pull back and do a retest. So if it pulls back to uh, 41-ish dollars, it's just a retest, guys. XHB uh, up today, 1.6%. I thought we were in a housing market bubble, but this continues to go higher, signaling that we are not in a bubble and that we will probably get into a bubble. This is a Livermore accumulation cylinder, uh, and we're probably going a lot higher, a lot higher. If they lower rates, it's going to be jet fuel for this, and probably the regional banks and emerging markets. Um, Mu doing that retest thing back to uh, support here, and today we were just sideways. Uh, but it looks good. looks like it's doing a back test. Uh, iron ore just moving sideways looks really really strong for a continued move higher with the candlestick formations little bottoming inverted head and shoulder bottoming pattern there looks good nickel up 0.4 percent that's also looking pretty constructive and working its way on up we've got aluminum up 0.55 um ah, i've got some selling pressure through here let it work its way out i'll probably close this gap or something come on back and then then we'll see if we can turn We've got Baltic Dry Index up 5.75%, looking good. I think we're going higher. That's also tied to iron ore and coal, and those both look decently good. Bullish engulfing here and here and here, uh, if we can close the week out strong. Newcastle Coal Futures uh, heading to the upside, uh, and we're just gonna starting to work our way on up. That looks good, and that's off a big retest. So base down here, breakout retest. Uh, so I think it looks pretty solid. Bitcoin, uh, it is consolidating sideways still. And uh, yeah, still consolidating in a big flag pattern, which is generally bullish. We also have Ethereum consolidating sideways for a little bit here, past uh, month or so. Uh, but it looks okay. Uh, not one I would be entering with a new position here, but um, it's just kind of moving sideways. And it depends on the overall markets and what they're doing. You could even, this could be, I mean, if, if we were to draw it kind of out like this and redraw it, it could be a consolidation uh, pennant formation. We'll see what occurs with this. And that's what it looks like here when I zoom in it. Something like that. It could be a falling wedge. Uh, SMCI also uh, moving up. Quite well today, up about 6% with the NASDAQ, overall NASDAQ. And I'm just trying to see. I, I still think this looks like a bearish pattern uh, there. I could just draw it in quicker this way. That's what I see uh, until we break back above this area. Um, I, I I'm going to be with a bullish mindset 
I mean, a bearish mindset. Sorry. And here's NVIDIA. I know NVIDIA was up quite a bit, 3.77%, um, negating what I would consider to be a potential head shoulder setup. It broke down and now we're just screaming back up. Uh, do we have more left in these overvalued stocks and technology to the upside? I guess, but um, I would not be putting on new positions over here. That's for sure. But uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you guys like. May Day is that coupon code. And uh, I would say gold and silver look pretty dang good. They look pretty good. Uranium looks good. Man, there's a lot, a lot going on here that uh, you could be positive over. But um, that's what I've got for today. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.